What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Next.js with SparkPost to send emails to whoever you need to. Now this video actually comes from my previous video where I showed you how to use GitHub Actions to handle cron jobs by using examples of emails. Now a few of you in the comments asked me to do a video on SparkPost and why I use it over something like SendGrid. So in this video, we'll break down how to set it up and use it as an API request. And then secondly, I'll talk about some of the features that I really like that help me change from SendGrid to SparkPost. So if you're interested in getting started with APIs and emails, stick around as we get into it. Right, hello, sorry to interrupt, but I just need to get this out here. 50% of you are not subscribed to the channel. That means you're missing out on content. So if you see a red button, click it and let's get on with the video. So here we are in a Next.js application. Now what I've done is just stripped out quite a bit of the boilerplate content just to make it easy. So I have created the main and left one div that's in the grid style with card and we're gonna edit some stuff in here to make this work for emails. And the only reason I'm doing this is I don't want to spend 20 or 30 minutes describing how to do CSS when the more important part is doing the API calls to create the emails. So SparkPost is another API send option out there versus SendGrid or any of the other ones out there. And I prefer it just because the analytics that you get provided out of the box are very, very good. And of course, they make sending emails really, really easy. So this is probably going to take us about 10 minutes to get an email to send. And that includes creating a form to actually send them. So let's first begin with the form. The first thing we need to do is import use state from React so that we have that because we're going to need to keep track of a couple of different items. First, we're going to need to keep track of email and that will be the user's email. So we'll do email and set email from and use use state here. And we'll just set that to a empty div for now. And then of course, we also need the message that you want to send via email. And that will also be from you state. Now things to point out here before we get any further. This code is not going to be protected by routes or auth or anything like that. So anybody can technically send this email if they hit your API point. But the idea here is to show you how the email send service works and not how to production protect that route or do anything like that. If you wanna protect the route, you could use something like next auth or clerk or auth zero or any of the other uh, authentication and authorization systems out there to handle that situation. Now these two pieces are going to be input types. So we also want to handle if the input is changed. So we're going to do a handle message change. And we'll take that and we'll set that to the event. And then in that event, we'll say let input type or input value equals e target dot value. And then we'll set the message equal to the input value. Then what we can do is copy and paste this and drop it down here and change this to handle email change. And then we'll set email there. So now we have these two functions that allow us to handle the change. The last part that we need to do is actually handle the API, but we will do that after we create the form. So the form itself is going to go in this section here and it can go anywhere 
or you can use emails however you want but we're going to use a simple form just for this tutorial so we have this h2 that says send email then underneath that we're going to create a form and on submit we're going to have a function called send email we don't have that function yet but that's what we will write afterwards and we can set the method to post and then inside of this form is where we're going to have the two inputs so we can do an input here type is going to be email and we're going to have name equal to email value equal to and this is going to be set to email as well but it's going to be the one that we're tracking the state of so that we know what the value is supposed to be then on change we can track this by doing handle email change and that will handle this part here it will set that input value to the email so that the value is always correct and then we just need a quick placeholder and we'll set that to enter your email now in the post when i did the github people were asking me why did i choose spark post over say sendgrid which is quite popular in the industry and the answer is they just offer a lot of features for free the analytics are really good they show you how many emails you've sent today how many have been opened how many have been rejected and that comes right in your email and it's just out of the box pretty good and then on top of that their pricing is really reasonable so if you're sending a lot of emails their pricing is actually really really good i think the first 10k is like 20 bucks a month um, and then you can do free while you test for 500 a month up to 100 a day so like they're pretty on par but their integration is really easy as well so while i was talking there i just created the input for a text area with the name message it handles on message change sets the value to message and has a placeholder message now the last part that we need here is the button so we're just going to create a simple button that says type is equal to submit and then we'll have a send it button so now we have this form and this form is just going to handle a simple input and then we can send via this send email so we need to create one more function for send email and that's going to take our api route but we don't have one right now so let's do that so I'm just going to call this email.js and then from our terminal we need to add spark post in and that is just yarn add spark post and that's the only package we're required to use here to send out our emails so the email itself is going to be a fairly small in the content we're just going to go from and then our subject line our html which will just be the message body and then the recipients will be the email that we have now we'll like to point out that i'm using spark post and i have it set up one of the requirements is that you have to set up your domain to use the email service so they can verify that you're actually a real person and you're not trying to spam the universe so once you've done that you'll be given an api key by spark post and that's the only piece you need to make this work correctly so from here we're going to import spark post from the spark post package here and then we're going to write an async function and we can call this uh, email handler we're going to take the request and the response and do something with it so inside our request first thing we're going to do is create the client and the way the client works is you do new spark post and then you pass in your api key which comes from the environmentals i already have mine 
but your API key goes in here and that's to verify who you are. And then after that, there is no requirements to do anything. You use something called the transmissions and the transmissions will handle sending the email using your API key. So the data that we're going to need is going to come from the request body. So we can do const data is json.pass and then the request.body and that will give us json and then we can actually destructure the email and the message from this data. So now we have access to the email and message from our request body so we can actually handle sending the email. So we can do client dot transmission dot send and that will give us the option to send and then inside the send we can set the content and the content for us will be from and the from here has to match the domain that you set up so we'll do email uh, dot james perkins dot dev because that's the email that I set up we're going to do a subject line and obviously the subject line could be dynamic if you needed it to be but in my case I'm just going to write the word test email and then the HTML that comes along with it so we'll do some back ticks here and do HTML body B and then we'll do dollar sign message so we're going to take this message from the data and put it in here and then we're just going to close out this paragraph of text and we'll add one more paragraph here and we'll just do dash dash James so that I know who it's from and then we just need to close out the body and the HTML now what's really good about this way of being able to send through HTML this means you could create templates and use those templates as you so wish there's plenty of template creators out there and you can make something look really gorgeous and appealing to your users and then you could just have you know that available so that every time you send an email it's formatted in a really nice way obviously there are other options they do offer some templating in the system but i prefer to write my own now the recipients part here is actually uh, an array so we're going to do address here and just do email and this will handle a single address to this recipient um but you could do you know a bunch of objects here and do a bunch of different types if you have hundreds of emails you need to send and then we can do our then clause here so then we can excuse, excuse then we can do a function here that will handle anything that happens if there's a then so in the then we'll just do status code set that to 200 then we can set a header here and we'll just say content dash type and we'll do application json and then underneath that we'll also need to say res and json dot stringify and then for this we'll just do error null and then we can actually copy and paste this then so we can just do all of this together and say copy paste and change this to catch and then change the status code to a 500 and we'll write an error here that just says error sending email and then that's it now we have the ability to send emails and then we just need to export default and then email handler and now our email handler is built as well so what we can do now is go back into this index and write the part that allows us to send the email to the users after they filled out our imaginary form 
So we can do const and then send email, which is what we called this on submit right here. And we can say async e and then e dot prevent default to stop the default functionality of the on submit and then do const results equals await fetch and then this is where we're going to call this api here so we can just say api slash email and then comma because we made it a post we can just do method post and then body is json dot stringify and then we're going to stringify email and then message and that gives us the essentially the results of what could happen so this is going to then be able to be used in a way of saying results dot status equals 200 we can just do a console dot log success else we'll just do console dot log error and hit save so that is essentially everything and we're just about to go and test this out but let's talk about what exactly is happening so we have this form here that takes in two pieces of information the email and the message and that is tracked by these two event handlers if the message changes we change and set this message to that value and the same for the email we set the value of that email when somebody clicks the button we take that email and message and we pass it down to our api in the email and then this email gets the data from the request body and then we deconstruct it so we know what we're using we then send the email to the recipient, which is the email and with their message, along with the from and the subject. And then if it is successful, we send it to 200. Otherwise we set it to 500. Then back in here, we ask if the results are 200. And at this point you could write an alert and say, success, you've sent your email or, you know, error message we've unable to send, please try again later. So that gets all of that done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch this application and I'm going to show you how it works on the front end. And then I'll show you my email where it gets successfully sent to. So here we are on the application. Here is our send email. So let me just change the email here and say testing one, two, three, four, exclamation point, hello world. And hit send it. And what we should get is a success message here that has been logged out. Now, if I quickly go to my email and log in, you should see that here is an email testing one, two, three, hello world from myself. So there we have it guys, using Spark Post to send emails through Next.js and API calls. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to drop it a like Comment down below more things you need to learn in Next.js. And of course, make sure you are subscribed. Until next time, see ya.